<laughs> Thalmanella. Um, <laughs> thankfully, no Thalmanella in our kitchen this morning. Now, we're getting serious. I know we're broaching um, you know, topics that generally do destroy appetites, but we all love cooking with chicken. We all love cooking with pork. So exactly. it's important to know how to do it. And I think debunk a lot of the myths that are out there because farming and, and kind of the processing um, systems now are so much more advanced than exactly. they used to be. So I'm um, just quickly returning to our beautiful fillet of pork yes. here. It is all right to still have it a little bit rare. Yes, or not so completely say, rare, but pink. Um, you can, so basically, pork, you can actually serve medium rare to medium. Oh. And just to make sure, I mean, obviously, you can slice it open. If it's blush pink inside, it's Perfect. beautiful. Don't overcook it. That's absolutely fine to eat. Um, if you have an, a meat thermometer, which not everyone has, yeah, but the temperature yeah. that you want to look for is if you basically insert it into the thickest part of the meat, and you can do that with chicken as well. With pork, you're looking for about 73 degrees internal temperature. And it's killed everything. And Boom. it's absolutely safe to eat. Um, chicken, um, also around about 73. Pork can actually even be a bit lower, about from 65 to 73. That's more medium rare going to medium. Chicken, safely around 73, 75 when you cook it. But um, yeah, I mean, the main thing when you look for chicken is, of course, the same with pork. Good quality meat, right? 100%. It must come from a good source, free range, definitely with chicken, um, antibiotic free if you can find, organic also. Um, and the main thing with working with chicken and pork, like I said earlier, is clean hands uh -huh. when you're dealing with raw meat. We often forget that we're the germ factor in most we're, of our food, exactly, not the food Exactly, itself, and yeah. don't touch all of the chicken and then touch everything else without washing your hands in between. So just be very aware of that when you're working in your kitchen just to keep everything clean in space. Um, a grey area for me, and I, I, I must say, I hate defrosting stuff, or actually freezing stuff and then re-kind yes. um, of heating it again later. But just getting into defrosting, most of us buy chicken frozen, certainly when you're buying in bulk. Yes. What's the watch Or a holiday or something, or yeah. you know, you're feeding lots of people. Um, so I generally always cook from fresh, um, just because living in Cape Town, we've got supermarkets around yeah, every corner, no, so it's lucky. not a problem to go yeah. find food. But if you do buy and then freeze with defrosting with chicken, don't do the whole put on a countertop and leave it and let the sun kind of warm it up. <laughs> Absolute no. Um, defrost it in the fridge overnight ah, or put okay. it in cold water in a sink. Those are kind of the two safe ways to just kind of you know, you've got to do it in advance, kind of, right? So yeah, plan control that. control that process. But just control that process. Just lessen the, the germ factor. Okay, um, so we, we've spoken about the temperature that we, we want to cook, yes. it, cook it up into. But yes. when it comes to cooking chicken, what are the so, golden rules So basically, also, so with chicken cooking, I mean, there are various ways to, to cook chicken. Basically, I think breasts are one of the problems. They're very, very healthy, lean meat, but people overcook them a lot. Yeah. Um, so how I cook chicken breasts is in the oven, little foil casing, just kind of wrap that up with some herbs and flavours, and just kind of 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes um, and that foil just traps in all the good moisture yeah, I was gonna say, so it keeps, keeps it nice either, exactly yeah. um, the way to also taste if you've got chicken on the bones and are you roasting a chicken and you want to make sure that it's also ready you don't have a meat thermometer or anything like that and you also don't want to overcook it just kind of check in with with uh, you know one of those like long forks or kind of a knife just just stab it into the flesh of the thickest part and if the juices run clear then you know it's absolutely cooked through you don't want to be seeing any kind of blood or anything like that then it's undercooked, put it back in the oven. Just very, very quickly before we go, is it all right to kind of uh, put chicken in the fridge once it's been cooked? How long yes. can we leave it So for? Um, what I do is if I was to say, I'll make a roast chicken on Sunday and I want to kind of eat salad chicken, um, lunches for work Monday, Tuesday, that's fine. I wouldn't eat leftovers for further than two days. I'm a little bit conservative when it comes to this. Some people may say three is fine, but basically airtight container, two, three, yeah. two days, perfect. All right, Amy Hopkins, thank you so much for debunking some of those myths. I'm going to get a beautiful chicken that's right, we've got some our chicken oven in here. the oven. Um, While well, we continue our chat with Dr. Darren Green. Love you, bro. Love you, man.